Hello and welcome to the sixth session of Tuesday Tonic, which will be a repeat of last week's one, which as uh, a few of you found out, there was no sound, but unfortunately I didn't realise until afterwards. So we are going to repeat the uh, theme today, which is, it's built on kindness. And when you think about it, what, what a good one to have to relay until the next week, because in fact, we ought to be thinking about being kind all the time, not just devoting one week in the year to that. So, kindness, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to take you into initial relaxation, and whilst you're relaxing, I'm going to uh, tell you a short story, an Aesop's fable, which uh, exemplifies small acts of kindness, and how these small acts of kindness can have repercussive and much greater effects than what we could have ever imagined. But before we think about other people, we always need to start with ourselves. And it's really important we give ourselves a small acts of kindness. And what does that mean? How do we do that? Well, you're doing it right now for yourself by tuning in here today and um, practicing. You're working on yourself. You're doing some good for yourself. So that, that is an, an act of kindness for yourself. I'd say it's greater than a small act. I think that's quite a big act, big act um, and it's a great start. So let's tune in to ourselves and relax. So if you lean back into your hard back chair, those of you that have been um, coming regularly for the past few weeks will be using and uh, known to use a hard back chair um, and possibly a block or um, some support that you can rest your feet on if your legs are quite short. And then you're going to rest back and just take a moment, as we always do, to ground yourself. So you take your attention down to your feet and just check that those feet are fully relaxing into the ground or the block that's supporting your feet. And then relaxing the calf muscles, the knees and the thighs, letting the legs soften, sinking into the hips. So you're really letting the weight of that pelvis and the torso also uh, be supported by the seat that you're on. Relax the shoulders, lengthen the back of the neck, relax the arms, hands and fingers. And I invite you now to just gently bring your hands and place them over your heart centre. Doesn't matter which hand. Um, is close to the body, whichever feels comfortable to do that. And if you're comfortable, then close your eyes, or comfortable to close your eyes, then do, or just drop the eyes down. And just give a moment to think of something that you could do for yourself that could be seen as an act of kindness for you. And as you let yourself relax here, tuning into your heart center, building a sense of compassion for yourself and the world around you, I'll share you with you the story of the lion and the mouse. A sleeping lion awoke to find a mouse running up and down his back. So he grabbed the mouse in his paw and was about to eat him when the mouse said, please, please, don't eat me, spare my life. You never know, I might be able to repay you one day. Well, the lion found this so amusing and funny that he let the mouse go. How could such a small animal help, possibly help him? So he let the mouse go. Sometime later, the lion became trapped in a trap and was caught, couldn't get out. And it so happened that the mouse was walking past. And the lion said, hey, hey, mouse, can you, 
can you gnaw through this string that's, that's, that's caught me up here? So the mouse gnawed away, and so the lion was able to go free. And the mouse laughed and said, Remember, lion, the time when you saved my life, life and you laughed because you thought I'd never be able to repay you with an act of kindness, but look how I've actually saved your life. So maybe it's a little bit of a far-fetched story. It is a fable, but the point of the story is the act of kindness, the small act. It meant nothing to the lion, but look at how that had a repercussive effect to the point where it, in effect, then saved his life in future time. So when you're ready, removing your hands, placing them on your legs, and can you straighten up, lifting up from the base of the spine, relax the shoulders down. See if you can make your back tall. So this is the seated mountain pose in chair yoga, uh, classically known as Tadasana. And we lift up from the base of the spine. Imagine a cord lifting you up from the crown of the head. Shoulders, as I said, were relaxed. You may want to roll them. And then from here, you're going to take the arms out to the side and place the hands on your shoulders. Ah, before you go anywhere else, you may just want to walk your bottom forward to the front of the chair and perhaps move the block forward because you're going to turn from side to side with the arms and if you're too close to the back of the chair, you're going to knock your arms on the back. So come forward and then you just begin to swing these arms from side to side, but can you keep looking forward? So keep looking at the screen or above and just work from side to side. You're breathing, obviously. <laughs> But you're breathing <laughs> one way is an in-breath, the other is an exhalation. So if I'm to make it a little bit louder, it would sound like this. then placing your hands on your knees and you're going to inhale taking the chest forward inhale and then exhale back so this is led just by the heart center where you've just had your hands which is there that's leading the movement inhale exhale in out in out in out in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. A few more times. If this pace doesn't work for you, then slow it down. I wouldn't advise going any faster, but you can slow it down if you prefer to. Can you feel how that's starting to really warm up the back now? And it's, it's quite taxing. Okay. Starting to slow that down now and come to a place of stillness, back in seated Tadasana. And then can you take your arms shoulder height? And you're going to exhale first your right hand with the palm face up to the right. And as you do that, keep your buttocks rooted to the seat. They'll want to lift off, so really keep on working on keeping that rooted down. Inhale, turn the other hand up and go in that direction. Making some contact with the 
Leave here, inhale, exhale the other way. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Couple more. Once more on either side, and then we'll leave that there. And come back to your center. Perhaps roll those shoulders one way and then the other. So you may remember many weeks ago, because we've had to take a couple of weeks off for various reasons, uh, we looked at Nadi Shodana, the alternative breathing. We're going to look at that again today. Now remember there were a few contraindications. Uh, so if you're pregnant, I wouldn't advise you to hold the breath for the length of time that we're going to look at holding it today. Um, any of you with any breath conditions, um, breathing conditions, lung conditions, seek your doctor's advice and please be patient with that. So your left hand, I'm not reflecting you now, so you will be doing the opposite to me. Your left hand is in Chin Mudra, your right hand in Vishnu Mudra, where your forefinger and your middle finger very gently pressed into the Mount of Venus. Resting those mudras on the uh, legs to start with, lifting up from the base of the spine. Now we're going to be working with another ratio. You are going to inhale for three counts, Hold the breath for six and then exhale for six counts. We'll start with the left nostril, so we'll take a couple of breaths before we begin. We're going to go for about five rounds. If you need to breathe out before I invite you to, please breathe out of the nostril you're going to be breathing out of and then just take an extra breath. All right, breathing in deeply through both nostrils and exhale and inhale. And exhale, bringing the right thumb to the right nostril. Inhale, left on one, on two, on three. Close both nostrils, hold the breath. Open right, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, right on one, two, three, close and hold. Open left, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, left on one, two, three, close and hold. Open right, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, right on one, two, three, close and hold. Open left, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale left on one, two, three. Close and hold the breath. Keep the shoulders relaxed, the back nice and straight. Open right, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three. Close and hold. Open left, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Last round, inhale, one, two, three, close and hold. Open right, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, close and hold. Open left, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Lower the hand. Keep the eyes closed for a moment and just observe how you feel. And when you're ready, open the eyes. Okay, welcome back. We're going to look at a seated sun salutation, Surya Namaskar. We're going to work through it together. So sitting upright from the base of the spine, I'm going to invite you um, a more basic uh, salutation and then offer you the opportunity in the next one to go further. So just stay at the point where you feel comfortable. Okay, you're going to inhale, exhale, hands to prayer. 
Inhale the arms upwards. And if you can, move into a gentle back bend. And then you're going to exhale and take your arms over your thighs. Now, if that feels enough for you, you're going to stay there. But if you feel you could take more of a, um, a drop down, you can remove these arms so that the body folds over the legs. And if that happens, let the head drop down. And then can you inhale and lift the head up, whether your arms are resting on the legs or you're like this. And then exhale down. And then inhale, peel up from the base of the spine all the way up. And if you can engage in another arm raise, possibly back bend, hands back to prayer position. Okay, let's try that again. Inhale up, back bend if you can manage it. Exhale to forward fold, going as far as you feel comfortable. Inhale, lift that head up as high as you can or back, and exhale, drop it down. And then peel up, or if you can engage the arms and bring them alongside the ears, draw them alongside the ears. Bring the body and the arms up. Move into a back bend if you can. Hands to prayer. We're going to do this a few more times. Inhale up. Exhale forward and down wherever we're going to today. Inhale the head up. Exhale it down. Inhale up with the back, possibly the arms. Back bend if you can manage it. Exhale, prayer. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale, the head up. Exhale, it back down. Inhale, back up with all your arms. Back bend if you can. Exhale, prayer. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale, up and back with the arms if you can. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale, head up, exhale down. Inhale, back up, with or without your arms, back bend, possibly. Exhale, prayer, last one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, head up, exhale down with the head. Inhale, back up. Back bend possibly and exhale, hands to prayer and just close your eyes and allow the body to center again. Feel that the back of the neck is soft. There is space in the spine from the tailbone all the way up to the nape of the neck. Imagine the cord is lifting you up from the crown of the head. And then from here, lowering your hands down. Moving straight into alternate leg raises, so the hands come either side of the chair. You're going to inhale and lift up your right leg and straighten it and try to lift it off the seat of the chair. Exhale down. Inhale, the other leg up. Exhale down. Inhale, right leg. Exhale down, keep the body straight. Inhale, other leg. Exhale down. Now you're going to inhale this right leg and hold it there. Can you stay with it? Can you bring your hands under the thigh? Is that possible? And keeping the body straight and the tummy zipped up, can you exhale and lift that leg higher? Drawing it to you on the out breath. Keeping that leg as straight as you can. And then exhale down. Now the other side. Inhale, straight and lift. Can you hold under the thigh? And exhale that leg higher. Keep 
Keep the body upright. Keep that tummy zipped up, working those core muscles. Keep you supported. And exhale down, lovely. Just a little wriggle if you need to. So we're going to look at Gomakasana uh, from a seated perspective, and that's the eagle. So we've got different options with legs and arms. If you've got vein issues, it'll be enough just to cross your legs like this. And then <clears throat> with the arms, you can either work like this with the hands in prayer position and the elbows together, or if you can manage it, take your right arm across the chest, lifting and placing the other arm over on top of that, and then you're trying to draw the hands so that the right fingers reach and touch the left palms. <clears throat> if you're able to cross that left leg all the way over, you can and you may be able to wrap that foot behind that supporting leg. In whichever position you find yourself now, can you inhale the arms up and then exhale the arms down. So you're working into your shoulder blades and the wings of the back. And then on the fourth time that you do this, and there's one more to go now, just drawing the elbow so you drop down. And the hands, or the lower hand, if you're in the classic eagle position, is level with the nose, so it becomes like the beak of the bird. And you're just looking beyond those hands, so if they're in a prayer position, looking beyond those hands, and then imagine lifting up from the tailbone, creating space in the spine. Imagine a cord lifting you up from the crown of the head, as if you're about to take flight. And then gently release those arms, take them out to the side, and please roll those hands up and down. You can roll the shoulders if you want to, as if you are literally in flight. You can engage those shoulders as much as you wish. Okay, lovely. And then release those legs, tap out on the other side. So again, maybe just crossing the right foot over, or if you can go all the way with this leg, taking it behind the supporting leg, that's up to you. So then left arm first, then the right, and cross, or of course this, okay? Inhale, arms up, exhale down. Inhale, arms up, exhale down. Couple more, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, hold the position. Imagining the beak, looking beyond that, to the space beyond your hands. Lift up from the base of the spine. As if you're about to take flight. And then release. Taking the arms out to the side, letting those hands. Roll up and down, bring the shoulders into play. You can roll the shoulders if you want to, whatever feels good, whatever feels it's loosening in the back and the neck there. And then release. Lovely. Okay, so from here, tap out. You're going to extend your right leg forward. Look, I'm bringing my block back a little bit, keeping uh, this leg rested. The right leg comes forward and is straight. And I'm pushing my heel forward, if you can see that. I'm going to rest my forearm on this thigh here. And I'm going to reach to stretch, uh, try to catch my hand around that foot or wherever I can go and breathe into that. 
and you can let the head drop so the neck is soft. Deep breaths. If you can walk the hand, the palms down the back of the foot onto the sole, then they're all well and good. A couple more breaths. Really working into the back of that leg now. And inhale, release. Take that hand to the back of the chair and exhale, looking to the back of the chair. Inhale, cross over the hands. You're moving into a twist. Exhale. And then inhale forward and swap legs. Okay, lift up from the base of the spine, fold over with the forearm resting on the thigh, and then attempt to reach that left set of toes. Exhale and release further forward, working with the exhalation. Letting the head drop. And inhale, release, turning one way. Inhale, forward, exhale, turn the other way. Inhale, forward, and a little tap out. And it's time for relaxation already. So coming into the chair, sitting further back now and let the back rest against the back of the chair, resting your hands as they want to be naturally so that you're comfortable. And I invite you to practice a little meditation, a kindness meditation. Once you're uh, a little more relaxed, so just settling into that place of relaxation, settling, if you can close your eyes, do, or just drop the eyes down, relaxing the feet, relaxing the ankles, relaxing the calves, the knees and the thighs, relaxing the hips, lower back, middle back and upper back, shoulders and the back of the neck are relaxed arms, hands and fingers, relaxing all the muscles in the face. And as you breathe, just feeling that peace and quiet and calm from within, knowing that you are exactly where you are meant to be, right here, right now. And as you let your mind wander again to the theme of today, which was kindness, being kind to yourself, nurturing through your practice, and then moving beyond that to others and acts of kindness. And a beautiful act of kindness is just focusing on somebody and sending them all your love and strength or whatever you feel that they need so if there is there someone that jumps into your mind's eye at this moment now that you feel needs some support at the moment or some extra love it could be a group of people it doesn't have to be just one person but whoever just naturally moves into your mind now just give yourself the next moment to focus on sending them love strength, whatever it is you feel they need.
beginning to let go of the personal people that are in your mind now and just moving back into yourself. Just noticing your breath in and then your breath out. Deepening the breath to wake yourself up a little bit more as you begin to come to. And of course, if you need to stay longer in this position and stay here for as long as you feel comfortable. And be mindful of being kind to yourself, not just today, but every day. And let that ripple effect move beyond where you can possibly comprehend at this moment out into the greater world. And small acts of kindness to others. We don't even need to know how that will be repaid, just having gratitude for being able to make a small act of kindness. So take care everybody and look forward to being with you again next week. Namaste.